we're going to take a look at a uh, really cool but really difficult song, Blues Land by Jerry Reed. Now, the, uh, this first came to me, a student brought it in a year or two ago uh, from a class he'd been taken at, um, at Berkeley School of, in, uh, in, in Boston. And uh, he showed me a duet version of a couple of the teachers playing it and uh, then listened. And he really wanted to learn it. And, well, we did eventually get to it. I get to tell you that part of the story. Uh, it got to some semblance of being able to play it a year or two later. But it's, uh, I was fascinated by the piece. Uh, listen to Jerry, Jerry Reed's original, where he did it on a nylon string guitar with accompaniment and some other, a lot of other stuff kind of going on. But I thought, wow, it'd be really neat to have a good solo version of this. So um, I took the music that, that Larry had and changed a few things. There were some very tricky things in there, especially a lot of stuff that I hadn't done a lot of before. Quick grace notes that almost sound like mistakes. Really cool. So that's a, that's one of the techniques in here that's going to be important. And if you start working on it, I'm going to in a lot of spots. I'll probably suggest try it without the tech the the slides first. There we go. Get the notes right. Just to get the timing exactly right of when you want to hear the note. So we we may you know we'll take this in or we'll take this in a lot of small steps. Um, then there is this really quick roll that I decided the best way to do this was with a, a back a back drag, a back thumb drag. Um, using your thumb to drag across three or four strings to get this, this, this neat effect. So all kinds of cool sound effects and things in here. Uh, the music is, we're going to have to walk through it like a beat or two at a time because there's just so much going on. So, so if you're ready for a big challenge and willing to take this in, in small steps and work on it for months, I think you'll have a lot of fun messing around with Blues Land. I also have a, I kind of made up a solo, a, a little interlude to stretch it out a little bit because it's just a relatively simple A, A, B, A song. We've got an eight measure A phrase that has got this descending bass line and then we've got a B section. And then it comes back to the A section. Each of the A's, the first one and the second one and the, the one that would be following the B have slightly different endings that take you into different places. So there's a lot of a lot of variety and even the, the final ending would be a different one than the one that takes us into the interlude. So uh, okay, that's it for some preliminary thoughts on Blues Land. Coming up we'll start taking a look at the parts, starting with the intro. Take a look at it first and see if you can figure out what the heck is going on. Something like that. Okay, that's what we have happening in the introduction. Uh, let's just kind of work our way through it. I've got some X's in there that usually mean kind of percussive slaps on the bass. Uh, they can you can sort of take them or leave them. They're they're optional. Uh, it opens up with our B minor chord. So just start with the whole B minor on. First beat is very easy. We're gonna grab the second, third, and fourth strings with three fingers and the B in the bass with your thumb. That's the first sound. Click on the strings and grab the chord again. One and two and then start moving the bar to, because we need the next thing we need is an A in the bass and your fourth finger is going to come off. But lower the bar to the fourth string. Not don't take it off completely because we're going to need your second finger on the second fret of the or your first finger. We're going to need a bar on the, the D string as part of what's about happening there. So we've got the B minor, your fourth finger comes off, and you grab those, another click maybe, and then your fourth finger comes off on your left, your third finger on the left hand, heading to the next chord. So this chord is kind of, it's like one move at a time. First move is lower the bar. Take your fourth finger off. Take your third finger off. Add your fourth finger on the B and your third finger on the G sharp. And that, now we have sort of a break, jumping to, so that last chord, 
we still got the bar on as if it's an A chord. And then grabbing, I'm hitting this with my index finger, grabbing the rest of the chord, my thumb, my middle finger, and my ring finger. Jumping down here to what amounts to being an E7 chord, but we just need one finger for that. So from the beginning again. Click in there. Bar at the third fret. Grabbing a G7 chord, but I just need the bar and a, my second finger on the fourth, third string. And then dropping it back. If I just took it down a half step, it'd be an F sharp seven, but we want it, the melody continues being this D, which gives us a, an augmented fifth or a sharp five in this chord. It'd make it F sharp seven plus five. Really dissonant, just mm, begging to resolve. Back to, back to the B minor. section. We're going to take this in really small doses, but once you get the first couple measures, you'll have the next couple pretty close, and then uh, then we have the thumb, the reverse drags to talk about. So uh, opens up with, like I mentioned at the end of the intro section, sliding, sliding the bar just to get the slide from the note from one to from the first fret from the A sharp to the B. Not necessarily important to slide it. You could hit them both, but and then we're going to build a B minor chord. Adding your third, I use my thumb for both of these notes, the F sharp and my index finger, the, the C sharp, so I don't really need the B minor, like I'm not putting a D on here, but now I am going to, the next melody note is the D, and the bass goes to A, so the bar comes off. Hang on to those other two notes, we're going to need them. And then the first grace note. 